Terrificon 2023 is in the books, and here's what I got. What is up, guys? Justin here, aka No Good Comics, and welcome back to the channel. As I mentioned, uh, talking about Terrificon, it just happened uh, about two weeks ago now. Uh, I didn't get a chance to put this video together. I wanted to show off some of the books that I picked up, um, some really cool stories, that uh, some opportunities that I had with some of the creators there. Uh, so I wanted to share all that. So before I get into everything, take a moment, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel if you are new. Uh, I'm trying to get back into the rhythm of you know putting up some more content. So hopefully uh, over the, uh, the course of the next couple of weeks, you'll see some more content from me here on the channel. So as I was mentioning, Terrificon, it is my favorite Comic-Con every year. Year. It comes around right July. It's in Connecticut at the Mohegan Sun. Uh, if you guys ever get a chance, I, hi I highly recommend checking it out, uh, going there. It is absolutely worth it, even if you're not from the area. Um, you know, just the, the 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 size of it's like perfect in terms of you know it's not like as big as New York City Comic Con or uh, San Diego, but it's also not like a really small Comic Con either. Uh, kind of in the middle. Uh, they've been getting some really big creators there. Uh, Chris Claremont was the guy that I wanted to to make sure that I, I got to meet and talk to, uh, amongst a few other people that were there as well so um yeah just uh keep an eye out for next year if you guys are around or have an opportunity to uh, to go and if you do let me know because i will definitely be there each and every year hopefully fingers crossed um but yeah so um as i mentioned before i have all these books here wanted to show um just a couple of them off um I mean, I guess I'm just going to jump right into the books first, um, and then I can talk a little bit about like some of the cool opportunities that I had. I also got a commission piece as well, uh, so I'll talk about that in a second. Um, so I'm going to start with uh, just some of these random books here that I got from a couple different random vendors. Um, so one of my main goals of this Comic-Con was to find ROM issue number 31 and 32. Uh, it's crazy, but I could not find issue number 31. I mean, I went to almost every vendor that I could, you know, uh, uh, get to, and um, I couldn't find anybody. I, I mean, they're either cherry-picked cherry picked out or the vendor just didn't carry any ROM to begin with. So uh, I understand it's not the most popular uh, series uh, from back in the day, but um, I was I was seeking these two particular issues out because earlier this year on Omni X-Men, uh, John had brought them up as uh, their um, tie-ins to some of the stuff that we were reading, uh, a lot of the stuff going on with Rogue, uh, some early Rogue issues. So um, I, I went back, I read them, I loved them, and I wanted to, you know, get them, I wanted to pick them up. So um, I was looking there, uh, the only one I could find was this one. This is uh, number 32. This is technically part two of uh of the rogue um and mystique storyline um here in this rom uh space night um uh, series so um i am still looking after um uh, looking out for 31 so hopefully i'll uh, come across that at some point a um, couple others that i found as well i am um, continuing on with my miss marvel collection uh, i got issue number 19 did not have that um before either um some of these i have in mylar right now i started to bag and board some stuff i'm so behind on just like my schedule and everything haven't been able to even really um unbag and onboard a lot of my stuff and you know throw them in mylar so um i also got issue number two which i was missing so i do believe i'm only like i don't know seven issues away from owning the the complete series so really excited for that um and then switching over to DC, um, this just caught my eye. Uh, I've been I've been eyeing a lot of the Lois Lane um, uh, older like classic issues. So this is uh, issue one twenty two. I actually found another copy of this somewhere else. It was really beat up um, at the show, so I passed on it. And later I was looking around some more, and I ended up finding a nicer copy um, that I'm really happy with. So um, yeah, uh, I don't know. Well, I've just been kind of exploring a lot. The artwork is what gets me the most. Um, and then you know I know I know a lot of these are like really wacky stories and thing like, things like that, but I do want to, uh, you know, go back and check out some of them. I, I have enjoyed some of the ones I've read already. Um, the other one I want to um, uh, show and shout out was uh, my buddy Chinmo. Um, he actually just hooked me up with this book here. This is uh, Annual uh, number 6, yeah, Annual 6 from X-Men. We broke this down earlier this year. Um, it's got Dracula, it's got Storm as a Vampire, it's all sorts of um, wildness, and also the cover itself is absolutely beautiful. Um, so yeah, if you ever get a chance to read this issue, I highly recommend it. Chinmo, thanks for hooking me up, brother. Uh, I got to hang out with him and the Three Men in the Basement crew. Um, and also, this ties into the, this other batch of books that I got here um, because Roger's brother, Dave Levesque, was over there hanging out at the booth as well. Uh, and I bought all these books from them. So I'm just going to kind of run through this. He gave me a great deal on it. The books were already insanely priced, just amazing. So, uh, Dave, if you're watching this, uh, thank you so much, man, for all these books. Um, so this is issue 111. Uh, a, a bunch of John Byrne goodness I will always always pick up any John Byrne goodness that I can find. You can see the prices on some of these. Uh, and, and again, he even chopped off some of the price on top of that. So 20 bucks for this. 
anytime I can find John Byrne, uh, uh, Claremont X-Men for under $30 for really, you know, good condition, good quality, um, I will absolutely take it. So I uh, got that one there. I got 127 here. This is with uh, the Proteus storyline, uh, Mutant X, really underrated story. Highly recommend if you haven't read it already. Uh, also just love this classic pink cover here with Storm on the front and, uh, and Proteus. Uh, yeah, so yeah, I had it marked 15 bucks there absolutely awesome uh and then he had some some dark phoenix stuff which i mean i'm always going to pick up the saga stuff especially when it's like 30 dollars or less it's just it's just insane uh so 131 this might be one of my favorite issues of the saga uh just in general um and actually i'm doing a reread right now uh with my friend candace and i had just finished reading this particular issue again uh as, as we've been kind of going back through it and um yeah i think this might be one of my absolute favorites out of the saga. i mean the whole thing is fantastic but uh there's a lot of great things that happen in this one uh in particular especially with kitty pride um so yeah definitely digging this as well got that again fifteen dollars insane um and then uh 132 which is just to follow that also marked as fifteen dollars uh so just absolute steal man dave again thank you brother man these were all awesome and then of course i got 134 uh that was marked at thirty dollars there just a classic cover uh, part of an amazing saga. So um, I own all these books already, but like I said, anytime that I can get the Phoenix Saga for $30 or less uh, per book uh, for, for uh, John Byrne stuff, I mean, I'm, I'm all over it. So um, yeah, very excited about that. Then he had a few other books. These are going on just a little bit past the saga um, and going into the stuff that John and I had broken down this year at, uh, or for, you know, Omni X-Men. Um, I will always buy this book as well because I think it's my, it's one of my favorite Wolverine books that I've read, you know, uh, from the Claremont stuff. Uh, so far, this is a uh, 162. He had it for a dollar. So yeah, automatic purchase as well. If you ever, uh, get a chance to check that out, kicking off the brood saga, really epic stuff there. Um, then we got beautiful binary 164, uh, also had it for what? $15 there. Just a, a classic cover, a great read. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm all about it. So that was, that was a, a great deal as well. Um, I also got 170, which if you've been following my channel, or if you follow me over on Instagram, you know how I feel about this book. Uh, we just broke it down earlier this year as well. It might, I, I think I, I marked it as my favorite book of the omnibus from volume three. Uh, this is issue 170, the, the classic battle between Storm and Callisto. Um, I talked all weekend about this book with some of the creators that, that I got to meet, uh, which I'll talk about a little bit later, but Chris Claremont, uh, Louis Simonson, um, yeah, it was just, it's awesome. And then even at, when I was at HersheyCon, got to talk about this book uh, with Bob Wycheck. So, um, you know, just asking some questions about it. If you guys haven't read it, definitely, uh, definitely worth it uh, to check out. Uh, 171, when Rogue joins the X-Men, what a, what a great welcome, huh? For, for uh, Rogue there, she's running for her life. Uh, again, this one was 10 bucks. $10 there. Um, this is just another classic 173. This is when uh, Wolverine and Rogue end up going after um, Silver Samurai in that uh, in the the issues that followed the, uh, the potential wedding uh, that that Logan was supposed to go go on to do. And uh, so, yeah, again, another issue that we had broken down earlier this year. I also just love the solid um, black you know background to the cover. Hard to find in nice condition. So happy to have that as well. And that was only five dollars. Um, and then, uh, a couple of annuals. So I just showed this one, um, uh, Chinmo gave me this one, but I also bought this one from Dave. Uh, cause any, again, anytime I can get this, I, I would love to have. So, uh, that was four bucks and then, a, um, a giant size annual number nine, uh, for a few dollars there as well. Classic, uh, storm cover and also our Adams, which I, I should have had our Adams sign this. I didn't, instead I had him signed a poster that I bought from him, but still really happy, um, or, you know, that I got to meet Art Adams and everything else and uh and yeah and to just you know grab this book as well so um so those are the books that i got um what did i want to get into next um i'll start with uh when i met chris claremont i got this sign from him again just talking about 170 i literally brought my own 170 to get signed uh, the other cool thing that i did for this whole comic con going around i, I tried to find anyone who worked on any of these books for my volume three of Uncanny X-Men from what John and I had broken down this year. Anyone that worked on this that was at the Comic-Con, I went and uh, not only got to meet them, but had them sign the inside. So that was really cool as well, um, including, uh, well, so the first one started off as uh, Bob Wycheck that was at Hershey Con. I have Al Milgram uh, sign underneath who he was, um, Al was, uh, he worked on annual seven x-men annual seven along with a bunch of other creators if you ever get a chance to read that wild story um i had michael golden up here um and then i had joe rubenstein here 
Louis Simonson and Chris Claremont himself. Um, oh, and then I had uh, uh, Walt Simonson as well down here at the bottom. So um, yeah, really, really great deal. And also just like makes this omnibus even more special, right? I mean, I already love the stories inside. I love the experience that it gave me, um, you know, reading this, breaking it down with John on the Omni X-Men show um, and everything else. So now just to be able to like meet so many of the creators and have them sign it and talk about it. Um, and again, a lot of it was, you know, talking about this issue 170, um, asking about, you know, why did Storm do, um, you know, why, why was she, I mean, you know, essentially, why did she do what she did uh, with Callisto when when they both, uh, you know, threw down? She was never one to be known as, like, violent, uh, necessarily. But um, my question to all of them was, did Storm know that there was a, a healer that was down uh, with the Morlots in this issue? Was she aware of that? And so because of that, she didn't hold back? Or, you know, regardless, did she, you know, just do what she had to do um, to begin with? So, um, anyways, it was a really cool talking piece just to, to hear everyone's thoughts as I brought this up to them. And everyone being, um, you know, Louise, Chris Claremont, uh, and then again, when I uh, mentioned it over to um, uh, Bob Wyacek at uh, HersheyCon as well earlier this year. Um, so, that was just a really, um, yeah, just a cool add-on to this, um, you know, to having this as... Uh, you know, in my collection. So got that signed all together. Um, the other cool piece that I got was, uh, where is it here? I'll show two other pieces here. So sticking to the theme with um, um, Art Adams and Chris Claremont, this was the print that I got from uh, Art Adams and both him and Chris signed it. So you can see there. Uh, it was a good deal. It was a cool deal. So the, it's, it's all, it's, it's the Marvel, you know, signature series that they've been doing now for these um for these posters a lot of like marvel uh creators have these now at their booths if you go see them at, at comic cons um so i got the two signatures there uh all together this was 60 dollars, and that included both signatures uh which claremont was only charging 15 dollars um just for his signature alone on other stuff and then um uh, I don't even know what Art was charging, but all together this was 60 with both both signatures. So I thought that was well worth it. Plus just the, the classic team there. Um, so I'm really happy about that. And the cool thing, the extra cool thing about that is that, um, so I, I first bought it from um, Arthur Adams. He signed it um, and I got to talk to him for a little bit. I got a selfie with him. Um, really, really nice guy. Got to talk a little bit about how um, I mentioned that my dad worked on 141, uh, Marvel Team Up 141, which he had, you know, created that classic cover for. Um, and so, you know, just had a nice conversation with him. And then after that, I had to go back because the the lady that was, you know, kind of managing everything, she said, you know, you have to go back. If you, you, get, you can get this sign, it comes with a signature from Chris Claremont, but you got to get back online. Um, and at this point, it was Friday afternoon and I had already met him. I was there first on, I mean, not first online, but the first thing I did was get online to meet Chris Claremont on Friday. That was my main plan. Um, but then from there, I was actually able to, um, I had to get back online to get this other signature um, Friday at the end of the day. Uh, and I run into my buddies, Paul and Michael. They were actually standing at the back of the line and had the sign that says, um, you know, last, uh, last in line sign. Um, and luckily, obviously knowing them and knowing that I had this, um, you know, they let me jump in with them before, unfortunately, we had to turn anybody else away. Um, and basically the deal was Chris was just willing to sign, finish signing these. There was a bunch of people that had this poster. So, um, the deal, the deal kind of was like, he was just trying to wrap up the day essentially and sign off on all those other things before I guess he went to dinner or whatever. Um, so, uh, the line went pretty quick. Uh, we get to the very or they get to the end of it, you know, with us there, uh, the three of us. And, uh, after he signed that Claremont was, he looked at his watch. He's like, Oh, I thought I still had like another half hour. You guys have the last in line sign. I didn't think, you know, I, I guess he thought there was going to be a little bit more time in the day that he was going to be signing stuff. Uh, so literally the, uh, the half hour after that was the three of us just standing there and talking with Chris Claremont. It was the most amazing experience to just have that one-on-one -on -one time with him. Uh, so much so that, uh, he shared a bunch of cool stories with us, some wild stories that we didn't like realize even about his career and like him talking about, you know, getting let go at Marvel a few times, uh, and a bunch of other crazy things. And then on top of that, um, I actually handed him back my omnibus, even though he signed it in the morning and, uh, he flipped through some pages and was like, just talking about certain parts of issues. Um, uh, we actually went through all of annual seven that I was talking about earlier, the X-Men annual seven. And he literally went page by page and just like talked about little notes or little, little, uh, you know, nuggets that, that, we the readers might not have realized or known about uh how things could have been a little different or should have been a little different or why he wrote it like this um and that was just like a dream come true true to have 
that experience and uh, and hear his thoughts and and see him like just flip through the book and and talk about it was it was so special so um you know to be there uh to be with my friends and uh and just to have that experience it was uh something i'll never forget i mean the, the rest of the weekend just it, my whole weekend was made just from that alone um also we we saw chinmo he snuck in behind us uh hanging out with us he got a book signed uh my buddy albert also uh was there as well he got something signed he took a picture uh, of us while we were standing here so albert thank you so much for uh taking that photo uh definitely one i'm happy to have and and uh, be able to remember the the those moments um and then yeah just being able to talk to him it was it was really um a treat so so yeah that is like um uh, I mean, that was like all day Friday. I saw a ton of friends all throughout the weekend. Uh, we were there. Uh, my wife and I went on Wednesday before the show. So we were there, you know, multiple days, took our time, treated it as a vacation because we're at a casino and just enjoyed ourselves. Um, and then I, you know, went to the con during during uh, the weekend days um, and just met so many great people from the community. Um, and then, of course, the creators and so on and so forth. Um, and then the other cool part was uh, on Saturday morning, my wife actually hit a jackpot at one of the pie gal tables. Um, so we were really excited about that. She won $5,000, uh, which was really cool. And uh, we have a little deal where if either of us, um, you know, win some sort of jackpot that's worth a thousand dollars or more, the other person gets a quarter of that. So um, I was able uh, to win a little bit as well, which was nice. Um, and also why I kind of, you know, splurge a little more, got, look for some other things to buy, uh, which brings me to my other bit, which I had the opportunity to meet and get a uh, commission piece done by Gus Mock, which I'll put his information here. If you guys don't follow Gus, definitely do so. I actually saw him at HersheyCon briefly, um, but I got to really um, talk to him and check out his work here at Terrificon, um, you know, uh, just an up and coming artist. He, he kills it with everything that he does right now. I love his style. Um, and this was the actual um, commission piece that I got from him. Um, so we got Jean Grey here. Sorry for the glare. Uh, Jean Grey as the uh, the Black Queen and uh, from the Hellfire Gala or the Hellfire Club um, from the Claremont days. So um, yeah, he absolutely killed it with this. Again, Gus, if you're ever watching this, thank you so much, man. Um, you know, like I said, his information is in the description below. Definitely check out Gus. It was nice to just talk with him for a little bit. Um, I believe he'll be at a couple other shows this year. Uh, so maybe, uh, you know, an opportunity to see him there. Um, but I'm glad I got the commission piece. And uh, it was just nice to really, you know, talk with him and, and get to know him a little bit more. So, um, yeah, stunning, stunning artwork and uh, happy to have it. So um, that was essentially the weekend overall. Like I said, had a blast just... Um, uh, hanging out with everybody. Oh, I did go to uh, Louise Simonson and uh, Chris Claremont actually had a panel together Saturday evening, like five o'clock. And it was just nice to be able to hear them tell more stories about all the books that I love and, and read and, and have been following along with over these past couple of years. Um, and that was just also really special as well. So um, seeing all the co cosplay artists that, that were there um, dressed up as all the different mutants that we know and love uh, was really special. And um, yeah, just uh, just the overall great weekend uh, to experience. So again, if you've never gone to Terrificon, I highly recommend it. It usually falls in July. It's at Connecticut. It's at the Mohegan Sun. Um, and it's well worth it. Uh, it's so much fun. The, not even just the con itself, but the nightlife is a great time. Um, hanging out with like three men in a basement. They do a live stream um, every uh, Friday night and Saturday night. Um, so we got to hang out there. Um, even my dog, as you can hear, very excited right now. Uh, so that's all I have for this particular video. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below of the books that I got, the artwork, the signatures, everything else. Um, uh, again, check out uh, the links in the description. Make sure you smash that like button on the way out. And until next time, I will talk to you later.